This video has been done for educational purposes only and I don't support any illegal activities. In this video, I'll be making one of the most morally dubious chemicals I've probably ever made on this channel. And that's because this chemical is totally not on a DA watch list and I have totally didn't have to taste it to make sure it's not salty. And that's piperidine. But first, what even is this? Well, in simple terms, it's basically a benzene ring but with a nitrogen in it. It's used in the pharmaceuticals range from stimulants to antipsychotics and to opioids. So to do this, first I'm gonna have to extract piperin from black peppers and then process it into the piperidine. So to make the extraction easier, I'll first grind the peppers in my coffee grinder. Next, I've added all of the ground black peppers into a boiling flask. And finally, I've added around 200 ml of isopropyl alcohol. And now I'll be setting up the reflux apparatus. On top of the boiling flask I've added an alien condenser and then I've activated my newly bought water pump. Next I've put the whole thing into a heating mantle and off we go. The whole thing was refluxed for like 2 hours. What's happening here is the isopropanol is dissolving a very select set of compounds from the black pepper, making a black pepper extract. Basically in the black peppers there's a bunch of junk which we don't want but there's also one compound which we really want. And that's piperin. Piperin is extremely soluble in isopropanol however there will be a bunch of stuff which will get pulled through too. After the reflux was completed I've run it through a filter. The flask was then washed with some isopropanol to recover some of the extract. And now we can move on to the fun stuff. Now that we've got a clear black pepper extract, it's time to do a distillation. The point here is to remove most of the solvent so that the pipe ring can be precipitated. However, keep in mind that it's not clean isopropanol and it contains some essential oils which will be pulled through along with it. That's also why instead of the bleachy smell, it has this black pepper aroma. You can still use the dirty isopropanol to wash your glassware though. This is me making a isopropanol sodium hydroxide solution and this will precipitate out some of the junk and then the junk that didn't precipitate out it will become water soluble. After the solution was added there was some stuff that precipitated. Once again the whole thing got pulled through a filter to remove the junk. So to precipitate the piperin let's add water. Because piperin is not soluble in water it will crash out. It seems that the more water I added, there was some green gunk which also got precipitated. So this piperin will be 100% contaminated with this green shit. Oh well. Okay, so now is the time for the worst ever filtration of my life. I've never had a filtration that went so goddamn slow. So basically, I've got all of this into the filter and because it went really slow, I went to play some Fortnite and then I went to sleep. But the problem is that when I woke up, I went to check on the filtration and it was still going. Like what the f***? So honestly, I didn't care anymore and I just scooped up what I had and put it on this dish. This is just a bunch of piperin and some gunk which I've scooped from the initial beaker, which is probably really contaminated piperin. Okay, so now it's time for the actual preparation of piperidine. So first I've added a bunch of sodium hydroxide into the flask, then I've added 50 ml of absolute ethanol, and to top that off I've added the piperin, which was previously dissolved in like 10 ml of 95% ethanol. So I've dropped in a stir bar and it's time to perform a reflux. So I've turned on the heating as well as the stirring. What's happening here is the hydrolysis of the piperin by sodium hydroxide. During this reaction, piperin gets broken down into piperidine and piperic acid by introducing a water molecule into the piperin molecule. The resulting piperic acid then reacts with the sodium hydroxide making sodium piperate. If you look at the structures here closely, you can see that the OH group in the piperic acid is where piperidine was previously. And if you look at the piperidine, you can see that there's a hydrogen instead of this long carbon chain. And as most of you know, an OH group and an H group is basically water. So that's where the name hydrolysis came from. So the whole thing got refluxed and as the time went on, the liquid was getting darker and darker. Eventually it became this brownish reddish color and that's when I stopped the reaction. Anyway, now I'm gonna evaporate the solvent so that the sodium piperate and hopefully sodium hydroxide can jump out of the solution. After cooling, I was left with this really dark liquid and a bunch of brown sludge. That's most likely sodium piperate with sodium hydroxide. The sludge was then filtered and the flask was washed with some ethanol. Okay, this is actually pretty funny. It turns out that most likely a bunch of the piperidine has distilled over into the ethanol. So technically what we're doing right now is the recovery of the piperidine that hasn't distilled over. And this is to be honest one of the finest blunders I've ever made on this channel. However, piperidine's boiling point is like 100C so I don't think all of the hope is lost. And there was some piperidine in the final product. 
After it was filtered through, I have started adding some water. This should have had precipitated the rest of the sodium piperate. So the whole thing got transferred into a beaker and the pH was checked and surprise surprise it's alkaline. Because of the sodium hydroxide of course. So now I've started adding some concentrated hydrochloric acid where it was acidified. We're adding concentrated hydrochloric acid to convert the liquid piperidine into piperidine hydrochloride. Piperidine hydrochloride is the salt of the piperidine and hydrochloric acid. However, I did acidify it too strongly because its pH was around 1 and it should only be acidified weakly. Now there's a bunch of sodium chloride which is going to contaminate the piperidine. Okay, so the whole thing got put on a hot plate and I started evaporating even more solvent. After a bunch of stuff dropped out, I've decided to discard this, because it most likely contains a bunch of salt which I really don't want. I've once again filtered off the solution. Finally, the filtered liquid was transferred into a 50ml beaker where it was boiled almost into dryness. And the remaining liquid got decanted, because once again it looked like it was salt. And I don't like salt. And finally it was boiled to dryness. And it had this really cool yellow color which to me looked like it was something else than salt. The whole thing was hovered around the hot plate until it was dry. However, to be perfectly honest, at that time I was questioning it myself if this was pipe reading or if it was just salt. So, how can we know as humans what is in salt? That's right! Okay. To me, to be honest, it was everything other than salty and I transferred everything into this little bottle and everything was weighed out. And it was around 1.7 grams, which is pretty nice. Okay, so this is its cute little bottle. I've dissolved it in 10 ml of water so that it looks cooler and it looks better in the thumbnail. Anyway, this is all. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for free pizza next week.